government plazas are also up there as the most important. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily put this as, as a type of district we need to be focusing on. You can only build one. And typically you build this in your capital. But there's a couple of things you need to consider with government plazas. It is the number one building at improving yield adjacency. Every building next to a government plaza gets plus one of whatever its adjacency is. Uh, I can only build one of these. I want to put it next to my my most scientific city but it also improves things like culture and it improves things like production it's a very very good building it also as we go through the game unlocks a lot of buildings that i'm going to be needing later on such as the warlord one well, of the warlords right um we're thinking ancestral hall we're thinking intelligence agency we're thinking royal society buildings like that that you're going to help us later in the game so the government plaza is definitely something we want to consider now the reason i put the industrial zone over here you may not think it's a fantastic place to put it but it's already got two adjacency by being next to my aqueduct my campus has already got two adjacency because it's now next to two districts and a mountain i'm going to put this down here government plaza now already i'm going to be taking over a wheat that means i need to be getting rid of this wheat at some point in the game but that's not necessarily a problem just because it's a bonus resource doesn't mean we can't get rid of it. And actually, this is going to be a huge food boost for my empire later on. And I know I'm getting rid of this tile. I can boost a population easily in my capital. That's really good. But suddenly, this ca and, and don't forget the plus one to all adjacent or to all districts next to it. That stacks with the adjacency bonus from districts. So suddenly, this campus now has three. But this industrial zone now has four. One from being there. Uh, sorry, two from being next to the aqueduct another one for being next to two districts and then another one by being next to the governmental plaza every district in your game should have a minimum a minimum of plus three adjacency there's a good reason for that the main reason for that is the most important civic in the game is rationalism now let me just show you rationalism you get it later in the game it's a mid game thing with the enlightenment so we can go down this. Extra science from buildings and campuses. If plus 50% pop plus 50 if the city population is 10 or higher, and plus 50% if the district has at least three adjacency bonus. You should never have a problem getting a population of a city to 10. That is, That should not be a problem. Every population in your city contributes more production, more food, more culture, more science. We should be building as tall as we can, the bigger cities we can. But by getting plus three adjacency with this district, suddenly I'm going to get a plus 100% bonuses in all science buildings in the city. That is a huge bonus and is the most important thing. Rationalism should always be kept in mind. Every city with a campus, which is all of your cities, should have 10 population and three adjacency with the campus. It is the most important thing to remember. The next three types of zone are optional importance. Now, the trick with this is to take a route and stick with it. If you are playing a sea game, you might want to think about going down the harbour route. Now, harbours can be found pretty closely here. You can see as we go into this one, you get lots of gold for things. Harbours provide lots of gold. Now this is this is one of the main routes of the of of sort of science. You, you want to pick one route that can add, you know, production's not going to do you everything. One other resource which is going to be used to help. Gold is the main type of resource. By generating a lot of gold, I can rush build things like universities and research labs, which are a little bit more difficult to build in the later stages of the game. I can also use it to accelerate early game growth. Now, in most scientific games, you're going to be playing with gold as your minor resource, and commercial hubs or harbors are gonna be the choices. I would recommend you focus on harbors in any map with a lot of sea. Harbors are good, they give you a decent amount of gold, they give you trade routes, which are another way of getting getting food, production, gold, all the goodies that you can get in later in the game. But harbors themselves also give you a huge amount of food and production based on adjacency bonuses and sea tiles that you can work. Now, you may have noticed, in this start, we do not have any sea within three tiles of our capital. This is not going to be a harbor run. I am playing on a continents map, I am playing on a uh, small map which is the standard we're just playing on standard settings here so a small map six players on continents so there will be sea but not necessarily much sea the second route 
if you're not going to go down the harbours route is to focus on commercial hubs. Now I'd expect commercial hubs to be put a bit like theatre districts in about half of your cities. Again, you're looking for anything that gives you a plus three adjacency. If you're not getting that plus three adjacency, it is not worth building a commercial hub. This is a pure gold route. This gives you lots of gold for lots of different adjacency build, uh, you know, for different adjacencies. Also things like markets, banks, uh, stock exchanges, they all just give you raw gold. A few commercial hubs and a few trade routes going to other empires will give you the most gold in the game. That'll let you rush by a lot of the scientific buildings that are going to be important to you. More importantly, it'll stop you going bankrupt. Alternatively, the third route is to go down the holy route. Now, a faith-backed scientific victory is a very possible and a very powerful way. It requires you going in a slightly different direction. This guide is not going to be focusing on using holy sites because you have to go down the route of Jesuit education. That is a religious ability that lets you convert faith into rush buying any building in a campus and any building in a theatre square. It basically lets you turn faith into science. It is incredibly powerful. It means that you can focus on faith rather than gold as you're rushed by. You don't have to really focus on things like harbours, uh, commercial hubs, all that sort of thing. But it does require you going in a bit of a different direction. Now, I'm not going to be talking much about Jesuit education. I might do a whole separate video on that because that is a very strong way of playing the game. In all cases, when you have holy sites, campuses, and theatres, uh, sorry, holy sites, uh, commercial hubs, and harbours, sorry, I'm just getting my words ripped up here, you pick one, go for about half of your cities to have one of those, you know, types. In this game, we're going to be using commercial hubs as a way of getting gold, so about half of my cities I want to be getting commercial hubs, but specifically, you want to be making sure that you get at least plus three adjacency when you do so. If you don't, it becomes a little bit of a waste of time. So for me, already, I've got a perfect spot for a commercial hub that's going to give me plus two because I get adjacency from rivers, having plus two there, and then I also get another plus one by having adjacency to my aqueduct and also my city centre. Already we've got three districts marked out which are going to give me plus three. We're not going to worry too much about spaceports at the moment. They are obviously very important buildings, but not as important as you would think. I would never, ever, especially because of their production cost 1,800, they are meaty, meaty districts to have to construct. I would never recommend building more than two spaceports, one in your capital and one in the city with the most production. There's no point in building more. You can't build more than one space project the same space project in more than one spaceport at the same time. So if I'm building a uh, Mars colony, for instance, in my capital, I can't build it in City 2. Just not worth it. And realistically, these don't appear until much later in the game, so I don't have to worry about things like adjacency bonuses. They, they can just be built anywhere. In fact, I could even specify that it's going to be built up in the tundra somewhere. You know? It, it's not a building to worry about. I need two spaceports but I don't need to worry about where those go specifically at the moment. My final category of building is optional slash construct as needed to stop the AI winning slash stop negatives slash stack adjacency. The optional category, realistically, unless you get a very big bonus, you shouldn't be building these more than about one district in your empire for each type. I'd always recommend you have one of every district in each type. So even though in this game, I'm gonna focus on commercial hubs, I wanna build at least one harbor, and I wanna build at least one holy site. This, this is always worth building a bit of everything. Uh, holy sites, yeah, holy sites are a little bit different. Uh, if you're not gonna go for religion, then you're not gonna go for religion. It's, it's fine, it's just one of those things. But everything else on this list I'd recommend only getting one or more of. Entertainment complexes are great ways of getting amenities. They do not directly help a scientific victory, but amenities and happiness are important things. If all of your cities are unhappy, then you're going to be getting less science yields from your cities. If they are ecstatic, you're going to be getting more science. So keeping amenities in your cities is an important thing to do. Unfortunately, amenities from entertainment complexes are terrible. You get plus one amenity for entertainment just in that city. 
a luxury resource will give you plus one immunity in four cities. So already that's four times as good. And in addition, arenas, plus one culture and plus one immunity. That's it. It's not very good. It's not until you get later into the game and we start looking at things like national history, where I could be building zoos. That gives me plus one immunity from entertainment in every city within six tiles. That could be giving me four or five immunities if I construct those right. So if that's the point I want to be thinking about building entertainment complexes in the mid game, once we've got natural history. And very much water parks fall into the same category. I can build one water park and one um, entertainment complex right in the middle of all of our empires. Water parks, again, I don't want to be building until later in the game. They don't appear until later in the game. But Ferris wheel, eh, that's fine. Aquarium is where it's at. Plus one immunity to all cities within nine tiles. It's really good. Zoos are only six. Aquariums, nine tiles. These are good. You can be getting six or seven immunities if you're good with an aquarium. You only need to build one, but, you know, they help. Dams are a bit of a waste, realistically. They're a good way of getting housings and amenities. They stop flooding, but generally speaking, floods are not that bad, unless you have a city where you have a lot of districts on the river that you don't want to flood. They do provide plus two adjacency bonuses for industrial districts, so they're not the worst thing, but they're very situational. Encampments, again, are very situational. I'd always recommend you build at least one because you want to be building military engineers later in the game to be building things like nukes, railway lines, forts, all the kinds of goodies that military engineers would get you. But encampments themselves, they're very situational. I would always recommend if an AI is on your border and looks aggressive to build an encampment on the border because the AI, especially on deity difficulty, is incapable of fighting encampments. One encampment will scupper an entire AI army because they just don't know how to deal with them. They run melee units straight into them. They send ranged units without any siege equipment just towards them. It, it is ridiculous how badly encampments are dealt with. We don't need to be focusing on them. Realistically, I only need one or two at most. And the same really goes for aerodromes as well. If I have an aerodrome near the border of, of, uh, of an enemy and I build a couple of bombers in, I, they are fantastically powerful. Look at that, biplanes. At this stage of the game, my inventory has 70 strength. Already, biplanes have a range strength of 75. And if I go slightly later into the game, bombers have a bombard strength of 110. 110. To put that into context, if I find battleships, one of the best games, that only has a range strength of 70. And a melee strength of 60, right? I, I could bomb the hell out of the battleship. Bombers are one of the most powerful units in the game, but I only need one aerodrome to launch phase or from. I only need three or four bombers at the absolute most in the game. I mean, jet bombers are even better and have ridiculous range, but yeah, aerodromes are good, but realistically you only need one. So lots to talk about, eh? I've, I've given myself the most important districts, so I've got the government plaza, I've got the industrial zone, and I've got the campus all mapped out, and I've got the first of my main um, important districts sort of mapped out. I'm not going to map up too much more. In terms of yields, you can see already before yield, yield tile is being worked, and I'm going to focus on that. Now, hopefully the city growth will take me in the direction where I can be getting a little bit more food. This four yield tile is pretty good, and after that I can get some wheat tiles down in that direction. I have to decide on whether or not getting an early game builder is going to give me much advantage. I've got a couple of four yield tiles around me. I don't need to be rushing builders just yet. There's a lot of flat land and a lot of river to explore. So in this particular game, the first thing I'm going to build is a scout. Now a couple of scouts will never do you too badly. I'd always suggest moving down a river because A, that's going to be where you're wanting to settle and B, going down a river typically is flatter land that you can travel on faster. Scouts can map much of the land very early on. We're looking for city states, we're looking for goody huts, we're looking for natural wonders. All of the things that get me the good things. I need to be looking to expand as fast as I can, absolutely as fast as I can. And to do that, Rome needs to be as big as possible, as quickly as possible. So I need to see what techs are gonna give me the most advantage here. Now, I don't need to be clearing land anytime soon. I've got 
a stone that can be cleared. I don't want to be keeping flat landstone around. It's not a very good tile, generally speaking. Um, but I can think about getting rid. So yeah, there's, there's one of this, and then there's a there's a wheat. So this isn't a magna start. And by that I mean we're thinking governors here. I'll go through the governors a little bit. But realistically, Pingala or Magnus are going to be the two you want to consider right from the start. Magnus is very good when you get plot harvests and feature removals, when you've got things that you can be getting rid of. Ah, realistically, I like getting him up early in the game, and I think I still will do that because I can, I can get a couple of big boosts from getting rid of this stone. But realistically... It's going to be mainly because he gets the Sattler bonus. Pingala I want to get set up nice and quickly as well, uh, so I can get some decent science coming into the game, but I shall get probably a flatland city along this river somewhere with some good food yields that I'll focus on doing first.